Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard about database reactivation and how it can be a real superpower for your SMMA marketing agency or your business to acquire clients without having to spend any money on ads. By using a simple strategy with the Go High Level system, you can actually reactivate old leads, either that's old past clients or old leads that you generated for a certain offer and monetize those e immediately we just had a go high level expert our resident gsd go high level expert actually teach inside of our program inside of our group a step-by-step -step process for not only setting this up but also the strategy behind it and a secret bonus at the end where we plugged it in to our ai setter system so that when you do reactivation for a database i will actually have a ai setter a robot reply back and forth and set them as an appointment as a sales call for your agency or your clients or your business so without further ado why don't we hop over there guys this is all about how to create and launch an effective database reactivation campaign with AI to set the appointments a step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to set it up let's go watch it and get shit done today we're gonna to be talking specifically about database reactivation. And if you've ever watched anything about high level or thought about what its job was or how to make it into a superpower or any of our foot in the door offers, stuff, you've definitely heard of a database reactivation. I'm gonna spend the first 10 minutes or so about this on this call going through strategy, going through how it can work, why it's a superpower, some math for you. Then I'm gonna hand over the reins to our GSD GHL master, okay? Mr. Adam McKinnis, Mr. Brandon Barth, they're going to actually show you guys how to set up a database reactivation campaign. I'm going to do my GSD thing and show you guys how to set it up simply. And then I'm going to hand it over to the experts how to set it up coolly and make it attached to an automated AI setter so that everything kind of flows together. Here's about database reactivation. Maybe you've heard about a scary offer we tell you to do where it's like, hey, I can generate you X amount of clients or jobs or listings or whatever for $0 in ad spend in under seven days. Right? Those kind of offers are possible because of A, a client going out and finding the right client with a warm list, but B, being able to do database reactivation. So we're going to go in here and dive into this stuff. It's going to be cool. So if you don't yet, take out your notepads, make sure you're taking notes. So I'm going to dive into it a little bit. I cut a couple of slides from an older presentation that I've done that really kind of drives this home. So you're going to see this. This is the client success roadmap. This is what we teach all of our GSD members for how to do an onboarding flow and an ongoing campaign management flow that keeps people happy. You're gonna see a couple of things here on this, okay? Number one, notice how database reactivation is right before even launching your ad campaigns. Notice how there's another database reactivation after you've started making sales and you're building up your database. Database reactivation, guys, can be one of those things that literally pays for your marketing budget, your management fee up front. We've had students who have literally worked with realtors and sold $4 million houses, $4 million houses and earned enough commission for their real estate client to fund their management fee for two years before they ever even turned on their ads. If you find the right person, you implement the right strategy, you can make this happen. What is the best part about database reactivation in the onboarding process is it gets you to extend and really utilize the honeymoon phase. If you can get quick wins for a client, it allows you to have enough time and leeway now in the rest of your journey with them to be able to set up the ads, go through the whole, some of these leads suck and I don't know, all that shit that happens in the beginning. It gives you that leeway, that roadway, that pavement to be able to get all the way to where you're winning. And once you're doing that, then you're building up a database. So we know as people who, who market, well, I'm going to keep using real estate as an example. You get to a real estate agent, you're generating them 100 leads, five of them are probably good conversations. The rest go into your database. Nine times out of 10, people, what you're doing is you're saying to the realtor, well, call the leads, call the leads, call the leads, not realizing you're asking them you know, three months in to be told off 100, 200, 300 times to try and find three good conversations. That's where AI setters, like we taught you a couple of weeks ago, come into play. That's where database reactivation can be a superpower. So when we're doing this to be able to go out and book those five calls through an AI, they only got to talk to the five good ones, 10 good ones every month. Then we do a database reactivation every couple of months and we're reactivating and utilizing that list. So nothing's going to waste. And we're also not putting the impetus on the client to have to deal with all that shit. Now, I want you to think through 
What I want to do, so what we want to have is a minimum list size of about 500 to 1,000 is what that's supposed to say. Bigger is obviously better for ROI and longevity of the campaign. We can do it as like a three-month standalone service, or you can ignore it as a standalone service and just make it a part of your done-for-you offer. You can charge thousands for this, by the way, guys, as a standalone thing. I prefer it to be as a foot-in-the-door aspect of your overall larger high-ticket item. You can get three to 11% of them will book appointments. And the reason this range is so high is because it truly depends. Is it a warm list? How old are these leads? When was the last time we contacted them? All that kind of stuff. And expect 60% show rate. And this is the favorite, my favorite part, 20 to 80% closing ratios because they are being reactivated. They are warm leads from the past. They are kidding with a direct offer. They should be much easier to close. Now, if we know the math, for these database reactivation things, okay, it can be easy, easy, easy to sell, okay? So all it requires is no additional spending. So they're just spending whatever your management fee is and you're leveraging their actual stuff. So if we think about fitness, okay, if we have a thousand person list, if we say we can book about 30 of those and that's literally the smallest number on the range we can get. So say 30 appointments and they close at a 50% ratio, they get 15 new members. If we're saying it's $130 average membership, 12 months average retention, you're worth $23,000 for that that win off of a very small list. If we go to a med spa, 30 appointments, 50%, 15 new sales. Again, we're using the same thousand person list. We say, okay, your best seller is Botox. Average Botox sale is $300. As a person who has a, a girlfriend who actually goes and does this sometimes, it's a hell of a lot more than that. So I'm using a very low range of this. It's a lot of units that gotta pay for this shit. Average Botox sessions needed is about eight to complete what they're trying to do. Also, that is very accurate. You get to about $36,000 just off of this one reactivation. You can see if you wanted to transition this into a done for you thing for, let's say, $3,000 a month. How many of you guys would be super, super happy with clients paying you $3,000 monthly retainer for a at least minimum six month contract? So now if you have this simple math based on numbers that are literally at the worst case scenario for what you're doing, you can easily show them $36,000 worth of value front. This is how you get your shit paid for before you ever even do the rest of the stuff you need to do. If you do this and you succeed and you get thirty. dollars $36,000 in revenue generated. Obviously, it's not going to all be cash collected up front because it's average sessions of eight. So you got to in, in, include the concept of lifetime value here to your clients so they really get to see it. But now you've got $36,000 worth of revenue generated and you only cost $18,000 for your six-month contract. So understanding all of that makes the pricing easy. Now, the normal length of a DBR campaign is going to be one to three months. How can you do it for more than one thing? Well, you're going to be doing it by creating cycles and keeping your list from getting fatigued. Fatigued in this case works similar as with your ads. Okay, Your audiences getting hit with the same offer again and again and again are going to be burned out. So you want to create different scary offers. If you don't know what that is, go back into the course area or on the YouTube channel or wherever, look up the scary offer training, services, products, and time of year. So like Black Friday is coming up. That's going to be a huge one. So if you do a normal scary offer reactivation now in October, you can do a whole new one in November where you're going in and you're creating a new Black Friday sale. Then all of a sudden it's Christmas. Then all of a sudden it's Valentine's Day. Then we got Easter. Then we got birthdays. We got summers. We got all stuff for you to do. You can keep this going over and over. Now, knowing your worst case scenario math, some truly scary offers around the service. We guarantee mortgage offers 10X returns without spending a single dime on ads. What is that? A DBR campaign. We help fit pros add 20K in guaranteed projected revenue in under 90 days. Using these numbers and positioning yourself against the norm of needing an ad budget and a management fee allows you to create these types of scary offers or these types of foot in the door offers or shout out to Rahul, these types of hot dog offers, you know, got to do that Costco shit, right? To make this work because you know your math, you know your KPIs and you know what you have to do. The only filter here is to make sure when you're talking to the clients, they have the list. In order to hit these numbers, right, you need to have a list of a thousand warm people. The best part about this, though, as always, with a scary offer, when you get here and they don't have the list, what does that mean? Well, now you got a conversation about a downside. Ah, okay. Well, you don't have that list yet. Hey, do you mind if we, you know, we have this lower ticket price point thing where we spend a little bit less money, but we can build you a list of this size that are warm in probably three months, two or three months. So why don't we do that? And then we can get you this extraordinary result with that exact list after a few months. Now you've created a journey offer a way to get people bought into a length of time with you that won't cancel the service. 
so I like all of that. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go to the setup now with uh, with these guys. I think the one thing I will show you, because I know they're going to show you how to do all the fancy shit. I want to show you how easy it could be if you didn't want to do all the fancy cool shit and attach it to an AI setter. Because that's that's always my job. In the hey, hey, Cody, Cody, can I can I just stop you there? Because I actually already did that. So I'll save you some time. You're going to um, do it simple? So gonna- I'll, I'll, sh- I'll show our classic DBR, which, which by the <laughs> way, you know, as some of you and most of you know, like Brendan and I are both GSD students um, that have kind of come in and partnered with Cody and Rahul to help even more of you guys out where we can. So the classic DBR that I'm about to show you is basically the DBR system that we originally had. Um, but then I'm going to show you how we can spice this sucker up using AI um, and, and make it a little bit more cool. I'm just going to, I'm just going to add something. This is a little shameless plug. Um <laughs> Like like Cody said, Brendan and I have been using the high level platform almost since it came out. So a little bit less time than Cody and Rahul have. Like I found out about it from Cody and Rahul. Um, I come from a technology background, and so I've been programming systems and CRMs for over ten, like fourteen years now. Um, and so I had a, I have a really good overall understanding of how to build these systems. And I, and I, this is my shameless plug. There was a, about a year ago. Um, I had dropped my kids off at school and I got a phone call from Rahul himself saying, Hey man, I've got an idea. I don't think it's possible inside of high level. Um, but here's, here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to accomplish. Um, and my, my, I, I honestly believe this. I think Brendan and I honestly believe this to the core is that if you can think it, you can build it in high level. Um, and that's, we we 100% believe that to be true. And Rahul came with this problem that he had. And he's like, I'm I'm 100% sure that I need to do it in a in a Google sheet and do this, that, and the other thing. And I was like, give me an hour. Um, and I literally took me about an hour. I called him back. I said, hop on Zoom. I'm going to show you. Um, and so if you guys can think it, but you're not sure how to do it, that's where Brendan and I come in because we have a very high level, pun intended, understanding of how this entire CRM works and functions and what can and cannot be done. Um, and I truly believe that there's, if it can't be done in high level, then it's probably not worth doing anyways. So that's my, that's my little shameless plug. If you guys are interested in learning a little bit more about how we do that and want to learn how you can do it, um, hit, hit me up after this call and we can, we can have a chat, but let's dive into database reactivations. Um, so this, what I'm about to show you right here is kind of the, the classic, DBR. I was literally putting this together while Cody was talking. Um, and I did that on purpose. So I did not have this thing started until after this call started. And I, and I did that on purpose because I kind of wanted to show you that apart from text messaging and, and actually building out your offer, I was able to build this out that quickly within 10 minutes. So I want to make that point very, very clear that the value that Cody ran with the with the numbers and the maths that you can make with this type of offer is very little time, extremely scalable when it comes to profitability. Okay. And and I I like that. I like to not spend a lot of time to make a lot of money. That's kind of what me and Brennan really appreciate about our business model. Um so I wanted to make that perfectly clear guys. I built this in less than 10 minutes. Okay, but this is the classic DBR structure. So you you saw a couple of those offers that Cody wrote out, and I obviously didn't spend any time writing copy for this. I just wanted to build the structure and show you guys how it typically would work. You've got a initial text message, right? And and everybody asks me like, hey, how do I get people into this? How do I do that? Um, well, I'm actually going to sh- add one more thing here that is a brand new feature, and I'm going to show you guys is the drip mode right here, uh, where you can do drips in batches of X, right? So if you've got a really big list, I've seen people do these with lists of 10,000 people. Um, Not a very great idea to go right out of the gate with a brand new LC phone or Twilio number and start hitting a list of 10,000 people. Not a good idea. So this brand new feature with high level using drip mode allows you to add everybody to this campaign right away. As soon as you get that list from your customer, you can add everybody to the list and you can allow this drip mode to handle who goes through when. Um, so really, really handy feature to add this because now you can take a list of 10,000 people and you can drop them all inside of this workflow and you can set this up to go out in drip mode, maybe a hundred a day, right? Um, and kind of set that up that way. So I just wanted to show that really quick. Um, now you've got your typical 
hot dog offer, right? Your your sale, your Black Friday sale offer, right? Hey, we have this awesome new promo. Do you want it? Reply yes to get it. Um, this was a standard type of message that I would send before. You know, we're going to wait for reply for 30 minutes, and then we're going to do an, a fancy if-else statement based off of their reply. But here's where the AI is going to kind of change the game a little bit, where Old, the old way was you had to think of every type of positive intent reply or negative intent reply, and you had to add them. I added a couple here just as an example, but I have seen some of these where people have had 15 to 20 different potential responses that they want somebody to move to the left to actually go and get the offer. We no longer have to do this when it comes to database reactivations and AI structures. Um, which is freaking awesome because we've seen some wild systems that use this structure go completely wrong, um, like very wrong and and actually lose sales because of it. Um, and whereas AI is going to kind of take over and and do it for you. Then you've got your negative response people, right? So you've got the people who say, ah, well, no, not interested. And then the last thing that you're going to have is you're going to have the people that don't reply. Right. So those those are kind of your three options. They're going to reply positively, they're going to reply negatively, or they're not going to reply at all. So part of a DBR is you want to hit them again. So if they don't reply, we're going to wait 12 hours and we're going to hit them again. Right. And then we're going to rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat the process until you feel like you've completely exhausted all options. Um, and then you're going to create urgency here. So, hey, there's a limited amount of offers left. We've got people taking them up. This goes out basically 24 hours after the first one does. Um, so you're going to try to create that urgency to take them up on that offer, right? Um, so this is this this is a standard DBR structure that you can then go out and sell for $3,000. Cody, do you remember um, what Rob Bailey sells this stuff for, I think it's like $6,500. He does database reactivations. It was $5,000 per thing for a while. And then he upped it. Yeah. It is 6,500. I think is what it was last time. So, I mean, Rob, Rob Bailey's a legend. We'll, we'll, we'll say that, but what means, what, what's stopping you from doing the same thing, right? It's, It's the exact same concept. The only, the only amount of work that you have to put in once you've built this is crafting the offers themselves. And you could potentially be making, you know, five, six thousand dollars for a DBR campaign. So really quick, Diana did have a quick question. She was asking, what is a good drip rate for a manual responding DBR that you're going to manually be responding to everybody? My question would be, why would you do that? (laughs) (laughs) The entire reason that we're here is to learn how to. I I would say, I will say one thing here. So one thing that I do say when we originally used to have to do the manual thing, is I said, do it in 500 chunks a day at max, or you'll be completely fucking overwhelmed. I used to do them in 100 per day because it's just too many messages back. The first time I did it was 200. I dropped to 100 because it's just sitting in front of your computer for hours. Exactly. And if you're going to manually do it, just be a straight killer. Like, don't worry about talking in text. Like the one way that we teach people how to do cold email and and DBR when you need clients, if you're not overwhelmed and you have time on your hands, you get a response, just fucking call them. Like, don't worry about going back and forth on text and hoping you get them booked. Like you send a DBR, they say, yes, they're interested in that offer. Cool. Call them and talk about it and see if you can't just get that sales call now. But if you want to do volume and get them auto booked and that kind of stuff, that's where the AI comes in. So I, I would think of it completely like almost like generating a call list for yourself if you're doing it manually, 100 to 500 a day, like Brandon and, and I say. And then if not, then allow the allow this kind of technique to do its work. Because the cool part about the AI that Adam's about to show you is every one person on that contact list has its own independent AI assistant talking to them. It's an independent conversation from everybody else. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be, we're going to be showing and utilizing the same structure with the DBR component inside this whole AI automation system. Um, So if you recall last week um, or two weeks ago, we had a, an AI training survey. So this is kind of the same idea. Now, what we've done here is we've made it so that Anybody can change their offer at any time. All they do is they fill out this survey and they now have a new database reactivation offer. 
So like Cody was saying, you've got Black Friday, you've got Christmas promos, you've got New Year's promos, you've got Valentine's Day promos, you got like there's a holiday for everything in, in North America and probably the world. Um, so you can come in here basically quarterly and just make a quick tweak, quick change, quick adjustment to the database reactivation offer and then do it again. Right. And so we've got, I'm not going to fill this out because I've already done it, but we've got a database reactivation to offer. So what is your offer? This makes this completely dynamic inside your system, inside your CRM. Okay. So what are you going to be offering? Now let's, let's add some more information and some more details to the offer because one thing that you want to have AI be capable of is replying to questions that people might have about the offer, right? And so what we're doing here with the DBR offer details is we're adding, we're, we're adding more to the AI's box for it to be able to appropriately respond to questions and things that people might be asking, right? Now keep, now keep in mind this, the previous structure I just showed you guys, right? This one, that's not an option here right? This is not an option here. You either are yes or you are a no. And if they respond in a different format or in a different way, now you have to have that human person take over. Whereas with this structure here, you can put that AI in that box with the information and the content for it to do its thing, right? So we've got details one, we've got details two, and we've got details three. Okay. And then the last thing that we do is, you know, where do you, where can we send people to book or purchase this offer? Meaning, we're also not going to be limited to, you know, is this a, are you wanting to book calls or are you wanting to sell products? Like, what do you want? Where can people go to do this? Right. Um, so we're also going to have a link to purchase or a link to book or whatever the case may be for them to actually take up people on that offer. And then the way that we like to do this is we like to also have a keyword response so that now they can do different types of advertising and different types of marketing for different offers like text this word to this number. Um, and that's going to also kick off your DBR campaign. So it gives them a little bit more flexibility um, as to how they can market this outside of their existing list as well. So just giving them a little bit more options. Now, once we've done that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you kind of how we've done this because you guys are all inner circle members. And so I'm okay giving away a little bit of trade secrets. Secrets. Every single one of those fields populates this information in custom values. Okay. So now we have a unique database reactivation offer that we can change on the fly using custom values. Okay, so here's everything that we just put in there. So here's our DBR offer. We decided to sell our AI sales assistant system for only $497 instead of needing to be part of our platinum program to get it. Um, and now we're going to have offer details one. So our AI system allows you to book calls, sell products, perform database reactivation campaigns on autopilot with no human capital needed. True. Um, details number two, this system helps reduce operating costs by eliminating the need for a human appointment setter or sales rep as well as easily allows you to reactivate your database with new offers on a regular basis. What are we doing now? Um, our AI system can engage with your customers and sell products for you without you ever having to pick up the phone. So we're trying to say pain and pleasure, right? What are you, what are you going to get? What are you, what are you going to avoid? Uh, with this offer, you'll be able to access our AI sales assistant system and resell it as, to as many clients as you want. Plus, we'll give you access to our private training portal so you know how to set it up for any industry so you can be confident that this system will work for any client that you bring on, right? So that's all we've given our AI in order to accomplish this. Now, we also have this fancy dancy prompt sheet because there's a couple of questions that I didn't show you, um, which is you know things like giving your AI a personality, um, giving your AI the, the goal, um, and then the link that we're using to sell or book this product. So this prompt is actually so, so simple. Don't overthink it, right? It's, it doesn't have to be hard. All we're doing is we're sell, telling the AI who it is, what it's already said, um, who are you, like what's your personality and then what the offer is and then any additional details about the offer so that they can actually move that offer to a sale. Okay. Now inside of this core four AI sales system, we've got every single channel. So that means that you can actually use this DBR on any channel you want. Um, we're waiting for the live chat feature to come out and this is going to be a doozy, uh, but it isn't out yet. So that's, that's okay. We'll wait. Um, so we're going to go with the SMS start structure. Now I showed you guys um, 
you know, the drip mode structure. But in this case, our AI system that we were just talking about can do more than just database reactivations. And so we have all of our internal triggers that we want people to use to get into one of our AI boxes, right? And then what we do is we come down, we just check for tags, make sure that they're not already in a conversation. We add tags to make sure that the bot can engage with them again. Um, we create a memory key, which again, if you were on two weeks ago, you know what that meant. Um, and if you weren't on, I suggest that you go back and watch the replay. Um, SMS message. So we're, we're telling this what channel we are doing this on. Okay. So what channel are we actually doing the DBR campaign on? It's the SMS channel. And we're going to remove all the other communication tags um, so that it focuses only in this one box. Okay. Now we're going to do our condition. Um, and right now we want to go down the DBR leg. So what do we do? We have our segments that the tag includes DBR offer or the message replied is that DBR offer keyword that was on that survey, right? So again, this gives us two ways for the people to go down and grab this DBR offer. One is internal by adding a tag. One is external by getting a text. Um, and so that now gives us a little bit more flexibility on who can all come in and, and grab this offer. Okay. The first trigger that I showed here was the tag being added. So if I add the tag DBR offer to anybody, this is going to kick off the DBR. Okay, you'll notice drip mode, 100 every day um, for our current list. If we were going to be doing a DBR, this drip mode would catch them and only do 100 people per day. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to update the AI's role and we're going to tell the AI that is a D DBR bot. That's an internal thing. And now we're going to send this first text message. So it's going to be, hey, Brendan, We've got a new promotion going on right now. And then it's going to use that DBR offer that we saw in our custom value. Okay. Let me know if you're interested. Now we've got the uh, AI initial message. So what we're doing with this is we're taking the previous message and we're plugging it into this custom field so that we can pass it along to the AI. Okay. So this is what we've already said. And this is what your, what your job is. Okay, and then we're actually going to update and create a prompt for the DBR right here. Okay, and this DBR prompt is effectively this one right here. Okay, and now the cool thing about this is that you can actually tweak and change and create multiple different types of DBRs um, just by at coming into here and adding a different DBR leg to this structure. You just copy everything from here and all you're going to do is you're going to change the prompt with a new offer, right? doesn't have to be the custom values structure. You can come in here and actually physically type in your prompt. And then it, all you need is a single zap. And again, the reason that we use zaps, Zapier, instead of the internal structure is one, it's way cheaper. And two, it has a memory key, which allows the AI to engage um, a little bit more fluidly with the conversations. Okay. So all we're doing is we're sending that initial message just like you saw us do over here, right? We're sending that first message, but now it's dynamic, right? It's a dynamic message that we can change on the fly and do again whenever we want to, okay? Now, the other thing that we probably should, oh yeah, I do it right here. So remove the DBR offer tag. Just get rid of it so that, why? Now we can do it again <clears throat> if we want to. We can change the offer in two weeks and run, it, run something else, right? Um, and so- Let's, uh, I'm going to go through a couple more things real quick because it's part of the AI structure just so that you guys understand what's happening when this happens. Okay. So the first message is going to get sent. Then we have this workflow and I'm not going to get into the complexities of this. Did the customer reply? Yes, they did. And do they have one of our AI tags on them? Yes, they do. Okay. Let's continue. Um, I'm going to skip all of this stuff because this is only relevant for social media, but otherwise it's going to end up going down here. We're going to send a webhook to Zapier. Zapier is going to use ChatGPT to create the response. And then we're going to go into the next leg of this, which is the AI assistance response. Okay. Simple, simple trigger for this. AI assistant response custom field has changed. That's all it is because the AI is not going to respond the same way twice. Okay. So, it has changed and now we're going to do with this condition, are they doing the demo or are they not is basically what that tells you. And then what channel are we sending that message on? We've got all the channels there. So in this case, we'd go down the SMS route. 
And then we're just going to send the contact.ai assistant response. And that in a nutshell is how you create a dynamic conversation using AI. But the biggest the biggest component, and Brennan will attest to this, 90% of your AI working properly is in the prompting. Okay. So whenever you've tried something and maybe it hasn't worked 90% of the time, it's because you need to adjust the way that you're prompting the AI. I had an issue with a prompt just yesterday <laughs> and literally it was, it was getting a URL encoder to work for the AI to do. And all I had to do was reverse two words and it worked better than it did previously. And it was literally just probably a total of 10 words total in the prompt. That was it. But just by reversing these two words, it actually worked perfectly. And and Brendan and I have spent too many hours <laughs> building Houseless. prompts and realizing those little nuances. So again, if you want help with any of these types of things, hit us up on, on social media and we'll get you into the GHL mastery and help you out with that, that stuff. Cause it's honestly, it's sometimes it's a comma that throws things off and you just need to be aware of what you're looking at when you, when it comes to this. So, okay. I am going to throw myself into the DBR system. So all I have to do here is I need to add the tag for the DBR. So we're going to go DBR offer like so. And High level has been a little bit slow today. So just be aware of that when I'm showing this and I'll try to fill in the gaps with some talking and things like that. Um, and while we do this, if it, does anybody have any questions while we wait for the AI to kick in and engage? Um, just so that we're putting on Facebook too, we did have a question on, is there a version of this for Make? And the answer to that is yes, but not very good because Make does not have the memory key. And so... We stick with Zapier because of that memory key aspect. And and I'll I'll add to this. I said that using Zapier was cheaper, and a lot of people think, well, no, you're crazy because Zapier is the most expensive platform out there. Um, ZapsUnlimited.com is your best friend. That took our cost per action from about six cents to about one and a half cents because it's twenty nine dollars a month, and you get over fifty thousand tasks, which is perfect. Even if you just wanted to buy that just to get an AI system in place for all of your customers that will handle the vast majority of volume that you could probably throw at it. Um, and the really cool thing about this structure that I just showed you is that it is one zap per customer, one zap per customer that can do sales, booking, database reactivations, and really anything that you can put your imagination to in terms of building out a prompting system for it. Right. All you do is you just change one field in the workflow, and now you've got a brand new bot that works off of one zap. Okay. Um, all right. So I did get that first text message, and this is it right here, which is not AI. So let me be perfectly clear. This is actually a preset message that we told the system to send. Right. Hey, we've got a new promotion. We decided to sell our AI sales assistant system for only four ninety seven instead of four ninety seven a month with our platinum subscription. Let me know if you're interested. Uh, what do I get with that? So again, there's my text message. This might take a little bit of time to actually respond because it's been going a little bit slow today. But now our AI is going to operate within that DBR box that we put it in, right? So it's only going to give us responses and answers that we told it to give, okay? Okay. Um, I got the text, but it's not showing up here. Hey, Adam, our AI sales assistant, you'll get a powerful tool that allows you to book calls, sell products, and run database reactivation campaigns. There it is. It eliminates the need for human appointment setters or sales reps, helping you reduce operating costs. You can also engage with the customers. Um, are you interested? So part of the DBR is like the DBR prompt that we put it in. Give it, give it that box. No matter what the customer says, it needs to re-offer. Do you want it? Do you want it? Are you interested? Do you want it? Because that's part of the overall structure. Um, is this a one time fee or a subscription? Now, again, I didn't tell the AI specifically that this was a one time fee, but I did obviously throw in the fact that, hey, the old way to get this was through a subscription, but now you can get it for $497. So let's see if the AI can come back with the correct answer here based on the information that I 
that I gave it and I put in its box. So there we go. This offer is a one-time fee of $4.97. You'll have lifetime access to the AI sales assistant uh, without the need for a monthly subscription. It's a fantastic opportunity, blah, 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 blah. Let me know if you're interested. So it did it again, right? It said, hey, are you interested? Do you want it? It's a limited time offer, urgency. AI is doing all of this, right? You don't have to have somebody replying to anybody. So for me, I'm just going to say, yes, I do. Give it that positive response and then get it off of its train to send me the DBR link. Um, and again, as part of the prompt, it was basically if at any point they show interest in this offer, do this is really what we've what we've said. And now another quick hack. So in this person, in this particular case, I wanted it to send a link. Um, if you wanted it to book an appointment, you could also adjust your prompt um, to add. Would you like to book a call? And then listen for that book a call keyword to move it over into the AI booking bot inside the system. So there's multiple different ways that you can prompt these things and tweak these things based on the offers and things like that. So there you go. It sent the link. Now this right here, it didn't do this earlier, but this is a chat GPT thing. I don't know why it sends the link twice, but sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I haven't, we haven't figured out a way around that yet, um, but there you go. It sent me the link to go and purchase the thing. So now what we do is now we have to get them out of this AI cycle, right? So if they do purchase, great. If they don't purchase, we need to we need to keep going. And so let me go and show you the response structure. So we're going to go back into the AI assistant right here, and we're going to go to the AI assistant response and just to give you guys a little bit. Again, I want to show you this because this couldn't do this, right? This was very rigid, very, you're waiting for a keyword answer. And if they don't do that answer, then what do you do? And then what happens if they don't reply at all? Well, in this case, we go back and forth for a little while, but eventually they just fall off and they die unless you want to create an infinite workflow that just keeps on going. Okay. So here's another way that you can avoid that problem. So down here, we're going to wait two hours. And what we're doing here is we're just waiting two hours because in the other workflow, when the client responds, we're going to remove them from this one. Okay. If you're, if you're a part of our GHL mastery, uh, private GHL training, you've probably heard me say this enough times that you want to bang your head against the wall. Every workflow should be a linear path. So if they don't, we're going to assume they don't do what we want them to do. And then we're going to hit them again. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're going to assume that they don't reply. So we're going to give them some time to reply. And if they do, they're going to get removed. If they don't, we're going to keep going. Now we do a fancy little math operation here um, so that we don't keep hitting them too many times, but whatever that number you want it to be, you set it up in here condition. So we don't want to hit them more than three times in a row without a response. If it's three times, then we're going to get some a person involved um, where we need to. Check the number of engagements. Now we're updating the backup prompt. So we're updating the original prompt. We're just going to put it into a backup field so that we can change it and do something else. And then we're going to update the prompt with a new one saying, hey, the customer didn't reply. Here's the previous prompt that you were given. And here's their previous response. So now go hit them up again. Okay. So now we're just, we're modifying the prompt ever so slightly to try to re-engage them to get back in the loop. And then we're sending that webhook to Zapier. And then the AI is going to reach out again. So this structure right here is probably far more powerful than you think. Um, I've had dozens of clients that will get a text message from a customer and do nothing, do absolutely nothing with it. Well, now we can hit them up again with that same DBR structure, that same offer in the same box until they're until they're done, right? So if they if they get past that counter, we remove the AI tag and the AI dies, the AI can't do anything. Then we send an internal notification to go and say, hey, go and engage with this person manually. Give them a call. Um, so that's right there in a nutshell is how you can use AI very simply once it's set up to engage customers with multiple different types of offers um, and, and allow the AI to just do its thing while you sip coffee, Fred Gillen. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, guys, I, I, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I will open it up to any questions if anybody has them, because um, that's the GHL Mastery way and the GSD way. You guys well, are all here to take advantage of it. Thank you so much for spending the time to watch that amazing training. Like I mentioned previously, my intention is for you not just to watch that training, but if you got something out of it, if you think this information is useful, I want you to continue that journey with us. And you can do that in a couple of ways. One, I want you to smash that subscribe button so that you get notified every single time we put another one of these out, which will be at minimum once to twice per week. The other thing I want you to do is go ahead and click that next video right there beside you so that you can dive in and get shit done. Hope to see you out there.